Welcome to The Visitation. It's good to have you here. This is where we share honest and vulnerable moments of marriage and family life. It's good to be here. I'm Mary Beth Eberhard, and I'm here with my very good friend, Lisa Iglesias. Hey there. And today we are going to be talking about parenting with mercy and grace and everything that goes kind of rolled up in between there. I know that you have four amigos and I have (laughs) eight. Mine range from age nine to 19. How about yours? And mine range from 15 to 26. Man, I remember when that (laughs) range was much younger. They were much younger. Um, I was thinking about this topic because mercy is necessary. It's so real. It's necessary for ourselves um, to have for ourselves. And it's also really necessary to give to our kids. Um, And I was thinking about how that has changed um, or grown, how I've grown through it, but also how I've communicated and taught mercy to my smalls and all the way up to my bigs, right? So when they were little, what did what did teaching mercy look like for you when they were little? Oh, goodness, I, oh Mary Beth, it's it's probably not a very pretty picture. I mean, there were moments I just would look at myself like, this is all I ever hoped for in my life. I remember being a little girl and dressing up my dolls and being like, and you'll sleep here, and I'm gonna push you there, and I just wanted to be a mommy so badly, and I was just found myself so many days just in tears going, I am awful at this. Uh, Everybody's crying (laughs) and including me and um, they're frustrated. I'm frustrated. What am I doing wrong? And I think way back when, um, I mean, I was, I was 25 when we had our first child and um, that's not very young. I mean, that's, I should have had my head on a little bit straighter than I did. But I, I, I know that a lot of things, like when, when things would go awry, you know, something that I thought was going to be so much fun uh, turned out to be a frustration experience for the littles or whatever. And, or they were being, um, you know, they weren't following the, the rules or whatever. I really took it personally. And I um, would get so upset. It was more, I can see back looking back now, it was more about myself and how I did not explain that well. I did not explain the expectations well. Like, had I um, come at this a situation, you know, if they knew what the circumstances would be, if they dot, 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 um, we would have all understood. And then when I have to come down with the inevitable consequence, then it would be maybe not joyfully accepted, but like, you know, all this stuff, I, hindsight's twenty twenty, but like in the moment, I would just be like, oh, you're in timeout and you're in timeout. <laughs> and, um, and, and in the moment going, this is not how I want to do this. Mm-hmm. I, I really want to um, gather you in my arms. And like the pictures of Jesus, you know, like the little children were at his feet and they couldn't help but just like gaze at him, listen to him, be with him. I mean, that is, that is the reality of little children, but also the reality is they're asserting their own little selves, you know, the, the self that God made them to be. And when they're little, it's a teeny version of all that they're going to be when they're big. And I want them to be all of that. So I was, I was slow to take it to prayer. If, if there's something I could change back then, like, you know, mm-hmm. a lot of people say, oh, I wouldn't change a thing. Look how everything's turned out so well. Well, yes, by the grace of God, I think I would have changed that I would have gone to prayer quickly and gone, okay, Lord, this is not how I expected it to go. I mean, I don't mean to make a, my children often say, oh, mom, it was not like that. You only remember the bad stuff. You only remember the hard stuff. And I think maybe that's a little bit of human nature. I don't only remember the bad stuff, but those are the parts that I like, oh, Lisa, you missed the mark. Oh, you could have done that with so much grace. Now, going to your home when your kids were little and many of them, well, everybody was little, when we first met, um, wow, what an education it was for me because I saw it happening in real time, like mercy, charity, grace, and maybe in your mind it wasn't looking like that at all, but I had never heard a mom correct in the way you do. Um, I'd never heard a mom like, um, gather them back together, kind of refocus, you know, kiddos and get back into the things they were doing or whatever, or even the correction, a lot done even with just a tender look, 
maybe maybe you had to you know touch that shoulder firmly like okay look in my face uh I would drive home I was glad that I had the long ride home because I had so much to process so I was very I am very grateful for learning that from you oh thank you I was just thinking it's interesting as we reflect on you know mercy within parenting I think about the beginnings where the mercy came not as quickly I think about the consequences actually that I would give to my children and how they didn't relate to the to the um, action. So, you know, they um, took a cookie from a cookie jar um, and I would say, you know, no TV yeah. or, you know, something something like that. And what I have learned is that um, it's very important. This is like the foundation of my parenting is modeling. Um, and having that open communication with them. Sometimes it bites me in the butt and I don't like it. <laughs> there, are, there is positives and negatives to it, right? Um, because I invite that, that conversation and sometimes I really don't want to hear what they have to say. Um, but um, I have learned to tether the consequence more um, more. Uh, more acutely to the action. Um, but here's the thing that really struck me, and um, there's a moment in particular in parenting that I remember one of my kids had, um, he had done something with, whether it be technology, like he was playing on his device when he shouldn't have, or it was something, and I had had it. And, you know, I came and I, I took that device away. But I took it away in a way I didn't communicate, like, you actually broke my trust, and here is why this is happening. And so I'm going to take this now. Mm-hmm. And when you can show me self-control, then we can open this discussion again. Those, that's the language that a very calm and gathered Mary Beth would have. You know, I'm able to say self-control is important. You are not showing it. Trust is built over time, <laughs> right? Yeah. But I took it. I grabbed it. I like, you know, <laughs> and I stamped down the stairs and I put yeah. it and I put it on the counter right there like full right. display not like somewhere separate and man we could we could feel the tension yeah. right and it was really bothering me and then i i went to my room and i prayed because i was like this i don't like how i feel this is not who i am jesus help me and he, um and he said give it back and i was like give it back oh no <laughs> it's not going back jesus no. and he was like you're lucky i didn't smash it right <laughs> give it back and so I went up and I took the laptop because I have learned in my life to follow what Jesus says. It's not easy. Wow. So I grabbed the laptop, right? And I walked up the stairs and, and my, everything about my body, Pastor, I just remember, I can even feel it. Like I sat down in his room and he saw me carrying it and he looked at me like, she's going to like throw it out the window. She's going to something, right? <laughs> something big. And I laid it between us and I said, I am giving this back to you. And he said, I don't want it. And I said, that's not the point. I'm giving it to you. He said, Mom, I, I don't really deserve to have that. And I said, again, that's the point. It, mercy, mercy is not something that's earned. Mercy is something that's given, mm. son. Powerful. And I am giving this to you because I'm having mercy on you in this moment. And I'm also giving it to you because Jesus said that he wants me to learn mercy as well. Mm. So in this moment, this is yours. Now I'm going to trust you. I'm going to, you know, that trust is built over time. And so we're going to begin again. Mm. And that phrase begin again is crucial in my family. I think it was St. Teresa of Avila. She would meet the sisters outside the confessional and she would embrace them and she would put her hands on their shoulders and she would say, begin again. And I, I mean, I use it countless times all day long to myself um, in my parenting, in my marriage, but also with my children. Um, because I'm not perfect. I mess up constantly. I get frustrated. There's 10 people in my house, <laughs> yeah. 10 people, three dogs, two cats and a partridge and a pear tree. <laughs> and it gets like, oh, just, just too much. Yeah. And the recognition that we have to have mercy within ourselves and, um, and mercy just within, it has to flow. Mm-hmm. It has to flow. So oh, that is beautiful. That's beautiful. I can picture that just happening and 
oh, I would love to, you know, know, you know, then what, you know, how it went and how, how, how did it turn you, out? You know, he changed, he changed, he, 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 he rose, he rose mm-hmm. to the occasion. It's not going it, to, not to say that, you know, 10 years later, we don't, you know, we're, we're not still visiting this, but there's a trust um, giving the opportunities to your kids to build trust is so important. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think also the humility to allow your children into your vulnerable moments of failure mm-hmm. and saying, you know, like, hey, um, <laughs> I I shouldn't have spoken to you that way. Mm-hmm. And I was frustrated and I was not the best version of myself. And you know what you deserve? You deserve the best version of me. And so I'm going to try again, and I'm going to tell you that um, you are worthy. Mm-hmm. And um, how you spoke to your sibling and that it, it wasn't okay. I heard it. It hurt my heart. It hurt theirs. And I know it hurt yours because you know who you are called to be. Right. And I don't think I need to say any more to you. Mm-hmm. I think you can rest in that. And you do I'm not going to mandate an apology. I'm not going to mandate that. I'm not going to take anything away from you because you know enough. You feel it. And and you can begin again when you are ready. And it empowers them to to own their their virtue and to strive for it. Amazing. So I absolutely love that. Oh, my goodness. I mean, I have demanded the apology. (laughs) And you will go in there this moment. (laughs) And, um... But I, I, what you just said was so beautiful. And that's what I, I was listening for, waiting for was you said he rose or she or whatever. One of the kids rose to their, up to that, um, that trust, that virtue that you, you know, when else do they get to learn virtue, practice virtue, except in those, those trials, those struggles, those challenging moments. Um, another beautiful thing is like the idea of, um, correcting the action but like remembering and reminding them how beautiful they are how wonderful they are that that this is something you said that was that was not kind that was uh, you know that's not that's not the way we speak that's not the way we talk here whatever and and who you are is just so gentle and loving and you build people up and um yeah going back to reminding them like that you are good Right. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's important to remind them of who they're created to be and that they are recognized as that they are seen as that person. So, yeah, you're listening to St. Gabriel Radio and this is The Visitation. My name is Lisa Iglesias and I'm here with my dear friend, Mary Beth Everhart, and we are um, continuing to lean in talking about we're talking about mercy and parenting. We are talking about the grace that is necessary in those moments. And I know for me, the the recognition that Jesus needs to be the forefront of, um, he needs to be the well mm-hmm. of my parenting, um, especially um, if there are any young parents out there to really um, learn these lessons earlier because it only gets harder. Mm-hmm. You know, when you're, when you're up against a young teenager you know growing young adult and they're they're becoming independent and you know they in early days they you know they would have been out on their own I was just thinking that like they they bring to you the biblical passages about well they were married at this point mom you know like they were (laughs) were doing their own trade at this point and you're like "Uh uh-huh yeah and there's a part of you right that wants to you want to point out well you you think so son so or you think so daughter well let me tell you what that looks like that looks like you doing this 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 and you start listening and they glaze over right and then but they also they glaze over but what does that do it makes them, it, it diminishes them. And our goal as parents is to build them up and, um, and help them see the, um, the fullness of who they're created to be. Mm-hmm. And so even in those really challenging moments of parenting, um, when you are laid low with grief or laid low in disappointment or sorrow that, um, you know, some of the actions that maybe they've chosen and, um, you are called as a parent to show mercy Mm -hmm. and mercy doesn't mean there are no consequences 
Correct. Yeah. It just doesn't. It means um, that you are loved. It means that you are seen, you are forgiven, yep. but you are held accountable. Um, and that mercy, I know on, we have a plaque. Actually, it's not even a plaque. I wish it was. I should have it made. It says, um, it's written on my grocery list whiteboard above the pantry, <laughs> but it says your day starts and ends with mercy. And we live by that in the Eberhard home. Mm. You know, I, I, I really do because, um, I need to have mercy for myself with myself for, um, you know, man, I forgot to pray. There goes my day. No, that's not right. my day. Doesn't go. My day begins again. And so I offer it to the Lord. Right. Um, those recognitions of, um, every, every minute, every second, every hour, um, is, is a moment that can be given to the Lord. We can have U-turns, you know, we can, all those turning our hearts back to the Lord. Um, and I love, I love parenting. It's, you know, it's who I was created to be. Mm. And teaching those lessons with my kids has been a joy. Um, earlier you had mentioned about, you know, mentioning, you know, our own, maybe where we had struggles or uh, as an adult, you know, like, or we made a mistake or whatever. And I think a lot of people are afraid to do that. Like, oh, well, if I tell him or her that I partook in uh, this. Uh, <laughs> right, I made this choice or that choice. You know, these choices. Um, oh, well, then they'll be like, ah, oh, yes, carte blanche, I can do that. You know, um, actually, if you tell the story and what ends up transpiring, you know, after choosing the wrong choices in life um, and then how you think of it now, it really paints a good picture. It's almost like, oh, then I don't have to try that out. Mm -hmm. Now, there, granted, there's some uh, of us who have to try it all out. And, yeah. um, you know, there's there's room for that in there's mercy lessons as well. To be learned there's lessons there to be learned because that ends up being part of their glory story as well. Mm -hmm. And so even if you've had a um, very sheltered, very, you know, simple life where maybe you didn't, you know, break a lot of rules in life. We learn lessons there as well. Um, you know, maybe they were, maybe it was out of fear. You know, I didn't, I, now I'm saying I didn't try, you know, any of those quote fun things in life growing up or whatever. Um, well, what was it? Was it, or it was, I, I think it was mostly a fear of like respect for my parents. Like I would never want them to go, Oh my goodness, you did what, you know, or whatever. Um, but I think, I think letting them know, um, or even, even something in real time, not necessarily like what we're doing, you know, as a kid. Oh, I did this as a kid. It was really dumb. Don't do donuts with your, with your car. You know, you could hit a pole, you know, or whatever. Don't, that's like, oh, as a kid. But like now in real life, I mentioned like taking off a couple of uh, social media apps off my phone. They're still there. I can get to them, you know, on the laptop, but it won't, you know, be right in my face and a constant like a reminder. Oh, hey, probably should check in, you know, um see what's happening in the whatever social media so i told my kids in fact it was almost like if i tell my kids i'm taking it off it needs to stay off my there's phone. an accountability there was that but then i wanted them to know you don't have to have it mm -hmm. like you have friends you have like real time relationships where you call each other you text each other you like you're praying for each other my goodness that wasn't part of my life you know when I was super young. So um, that's real. And then and then I, I, I said, okay, I took those things off, guys. And they said, oh, mama, we're so proud of you and that we're going to pray for you. And I'm, I'm like, wow, I, wow. I mean, I had, I had lovely conversations with my mom. I, you know, we, we talked about, you know, you know, encouraging, you know, she would encourage me. And stuff. But like when your teenager tells you, I'm going to pray for you, mama, that you have, the fortitude to get I'm like, who are you? How did you learn to talk like that? I didn't teach you that. But but you did through your example. Mm -hmm. And and I was just thinking, you know, as parents, we have to empower our kids. And, you know, you do that, Lisa. You do that really well. And um, I try to do that as well for my kids. I was thinking of a funny moment. You know, I tell my kids um, that they have, they have control of, like, what they allow in their hearts and, mm. and out, right? Yes. Um, so if one of their children, one of their friends or, you know, 
honestly, one of the siblings will say something like, you know, you're a stupid head or you're this and, <laughs> yeah. um, and, you know, little, you know, whatever, um, I'm always wanting to think of the, the Grinch who's so like Lucy Lou or whatever, uh-huh, yeah. like comes down the stairs, right? Like little, um, sweetie comes down and she's like, um, so-and-so called me a, a doo-doo head. And, <laughs> and my honest thing is, you know, are you a doo-doo head? Oh my head? goodness. I've said that too. And, and, and she'll say, well, no. And I'm like, then you, you don't have to let that into yeah, your heart. You don't right? receive that. So uh, we have, we have taught that lesson, but here's the funny thing. So then comes, you know, the, the culprit, the perpetrator, right? Yes. right? He comes down and, and, you know, we're having the discussion and I'm like, you know, what do you think you need to do here? Why'd that happen? Um, so much time is spent in this. And and that's something that needs to be said too. It's worth it, but it is time. Like oh, you're, you're, you're pumping time into it. Um, but so I watch and, you know, he goes over and he's having a whatever conversation. And I see this little saucy munchkin of mine put her hands on her hips. And she's like, well, I don't have to let your, I don't have to let your sorry into my heart. And, oh. and I thought, Ooh. Ooh, whoops. <laughs> um, and so we, we recognize that. And, you know, and so the, the, and the conversation continues, you know, you could be like, are you kidding me? Your brother just came. He offered, he offered himself, he, you know, and. Um, but the, you, you got to follow, you're constantly following through. That's why we're here as parents. That's, that's the, um, that's a necessity. Like it's, it's so important to invest in that way. That's how we form souls to, we form them in virtue. We form them to change the world. Um, imagine if people communicated that way, you know, um, you broke my trust right? and trust is built over time. (laughs) And so we're going to begin again, but we're not going to begin where we were. Mm-hmm. And, and, oh, yeah. um, so instead we, well, I'll speak for myself. We respond emotionally mm-hmm. and, um, and then, well, I'm just never going to text that person again, or I'm just not going to be available for them again or whatever. And, um, and close ourselves off, which that's not solving anything. Right. No. And I remember hearing when the kids were at the different ages and I remember hearing like one person, I thought it was so callous and cold, but, um, she was telling me that sometimes she just has to look at these children like they're not hers mm. and respond to them the way the most wonderful Montessori trained, exceptional Swedish teacher or something <laughs> would respond in, and, and, um, so some of the examples you just shared are what I would imagine that um, loving, charitable, merciful parent would sound like. And then when I think about my responses, they sound more of the um, uh, rough around the edges, you know, response, because I'm coming from this place of that emotional answer. Mm-hmm. But um, so I, I don't... Uh, I don't recommend that particular suggestion of pretend that they're not yours, but instead pretend or instead see them as that, that gift. And even though they're in that struggle, even though they're uh, coming up with the different responses, I absolutely think that's hilarious. And that you didn't laugh when she, where, when that child said, I don't have to let your sorry into my heart. I don't know how you didn't laugh. Um, But they, to see that, like, and to recognize Oh my goodness, this is part of this growth. This person is just growing just right now. Like right. this is transformative. Yeah. And I think when we talk about mercy, it's important to recognize that as our kids get older, we have to teach them where the fount of mercy is. And so we are also called to model um, the sacraments. So, you know, um, I had a kiddo who, um, I don't know, minor little skirmish within the house, something like that. And, oh, mom, can I go to confession? And I'm looking at my calendar thinking like, oh, my gosh. Yes. I, I mean, like, how do thank you, you say no? Jesus, how do you say no? That you want to go to confession. Yes. But also like, oh, I got Tuesday night, Thursday night. And I'm thinking like, Mary Beth, you have Tuesday night, Thursday night, Friday night, Saturday. And you can also just say, hey, Father, can you hear this little <laughs> amigo's um confession, I guarantee it would be small, you know, like just short, but, um, we, we've got to go. Mm. We have to go because if we do it when they're young, it's, it's going to be that place they turn when they're older. Mm -hmm. And I, as they get older, that's, I mean, we know the temptations are bigger Mm -hmm. and the, um, because we fall victim to them all the Mm -hmm. time. So I want to know, 
that the relationship that I'm fostering um, within for mercy um, points them toward Jesus. I always want to be that advocate, mm-hmm. just like Mama Mary. I want to point toward Jesus um, because then as they grow older, we're able to release them. That's really what we're supposed to do. We're supposed to release them, right? And um, and so they go to, we can say like, go, go to confession and entrust. I don't have to revisit that with them. Mm-hmm. It's it's between them and the Lord, and um, and the relationship that we share is is mm-hmm. is steady. You yeah. know what I mean. And and ultimately, that is what we want. We want them to know Jesus and and know His love and rest in His love and grow in His love. So even if confession is something that um, isn't your first love, mm-hmm. we can model it. We can. Um, again, not necessarily fake it till we make it, but we can model. You want to go to confession? Let's find. Let's find a time. Let's get you there. Whatever. You, be real. Be be. You know, even at, even if it go isn't something yourself. correct, even if it isn't something that is your first thought. But guess what? Something about how you've lived your life has taught your children that is a place they want to get to. So, yeah. I think that that's beautiful. I think it's the goal is that we teach mercy by modeling. Mercy itself, I, I, that's that's the way Jesus uh, lived here, and we're called to be His example. Amen. So, um, on that, let's take a moment, friend. Mm. Thank the Lord. It's just so good to gather with you, and I'm grateful for it. Thank you, Jesus. You're listening to Saint Gabriel Radio. Thanks for joining us for the visitation. I'm Lisa Iglesias here with Mary Beth Eberhard. We look forward to being with you again soon.